This is episode 40 of Brombird News. I'm Tatiana Thompson. Welcome. In the past couple of weeks, I've received several emails asking me why all of a sudden American goldfinches stopped eating at Niger or finch feeders and they were actually going more for black sunflower seeds. Well, there's a simple explanation for that. At this time of the year, especially if you're on the East Coast rather than on the West, American goldfinches start their breeding season. So obviously they like to eat something that has more energy, more protein, and that's what black sunflower seeds offer for them. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend is take down your Niger feeders, keep your seeds somewhere in a dry, cool place until goldfinches switch back to Niger, and offer more black sunflower seeds. Have a look at what I've done with the feeder here. The reason I have it on the window is uh, basically to dedicate one feeder just for goldfinches. They're not very shy, so they'll come as close to your house as possible. And that will also kind of eliminate all the other birds. They will share it with nuthatches and maybe some chickadees, but it will be basically just goldfinches eating at that feeder. I give them hulled sunflower seeds uh, just because that makes less mess. These birds are so messy. Well, we'll talk about what kind of nesting material to provide for goldfinches on the next episode. Hello, David. This week's question for you is from Fran Clement, who lives in Alabama. Here's what she writes. We put up a small squirrel buster feeder next to our pool enclosure, and after a couple of years, we began to feel like we're being bitten by something. We could feel it and a bump would appear, but we couldn't see anything. Here in Alabama, we're actually used to no seams. So is it possible that we have bird mites? We have now moved the feeder to the middle of the yard. Hi, Fran. The mites you refer to belong to a group that parasitize birds, including poultry, as well as rodents. Adult mites are about 1 seconds of an inch in size, and they're often dark in color because of the presence of blood inside the mite. They generally live in an animal's nest and feed on the blood of both adults and the babies. They don't normally leave that nest, but may do so if the nest is abandoned for some reason or if the host animal dies. And that's when they can indeed enter our homes, sometimes in large numbers. While these mites will bite humans, they can survive and reproduce on our blood alone. However, they will live for weeks and even months without feeding. And that's why they don't establish any kind of permanent infestation, because we're not a suitable substitute host. Humans most often acquire mites when they handle birds, wild and domesticated. It usually occurs among those working in pet stores or scientists handling wild birds. I recall years ago sticking my hand into a swallow nest to ban the nestlings, and my arm looked like it was coated with black pepper. A quick wash with warm soapy water quickly got rid of them, and I don't think I was bitten at all. The bite which is generally a bright red in color um, and occasionally surrounded by a rash, is irritating and itchy, but not dangerous unless it becomes infected. As for your squirrel buster feeder, I'd be really surprised to learn that it was the source of any of those potential mites that bit you. A feeder, especially of the tubular variety, is not likely to house mites by itself. These parasites prefer to remain on the birds. In all of my 40 years of feeding birds, I've never heard of mite infestations originating from feeders. In any case, until we know more about mites and bird feeders, moving it away from your pool enclosure is probably not a bad idea. And of course, washing your feeder every few weeks or so in mild, uh, bleached, hot, soapy water is always a good idea. And the beauty of the Squirrel Buster feeders is, is they're dishwasher safe. On episode 36, I was excited to share with you that the first spoon-billed sandpipers had been born in captivity. This species is on the verge of extinction in the wild, and the Waterfowl and Wetlands Trust in England has been trying really hard to raise awareness and breed those birds in captivity. Well, sadly, out of seven eggs laid in captivity, two chicks were born. Unfortunately, one died right away, and the other one, despite being very healthy and doing very well, died a few days later. The researchers on the projects are absolutely devastated, but no one is giving up just yet. 
If you're ever in Bolivia, Madidi National Park is a must-see, as long as you don't expect to cover it in one day. At 19,000 square kilometers, or almost 5 million acres, this park is home to 10% of the world's bird species, and this country is actually smaller than the state of Alaska. Research teams have spent almost two years exploring the park, and they're not even halfway through. They have just discovered bird species number 1,000, and they have catalogued about 950 species of butterfly, which is actually more than the US and Canada combined. Hmm, 5 million acres of wildlife paradise? I wouldn't say no to that. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is going to create 50 new protected areas in the Rookeroo Bay Islands. This area is home to such birds as fish crows, brown pelicans, double-crested cormorants, ibises, herons, and many other wading birds. The protected areas will prohibit any boaters or actually any humans to get too close to the birds that are nesting in the mangroves, and hopefully this will slow the decline of the birds in that area. So, we are moving away from Arizona and going to Colorado. The 5th annual Yampa Valley Crane Festival will be taking place from the 8th to the 11th of September. So, if you're craving cranes, this is the place to be. There will be crane view on shuttles, uh, walking tours, keynote speakers, films about cranes. For more information, check out their website. Every week I get really excited looking for what kind of pictures we get on the winner's circle. Uh, another amazing thing about this contest is that you never know who will win. Sometimes it's a person who submits one picture and all of a sudden they win. And other times it's a person who's been submitting for months. And this is actually what happens on this weekend. But before I announce the winner, let's check out the top five this week. And the winner on episode 40 is RJ Sippus. Congratulations, we're sending you a Squirrel Buster Plus for all your efforts. Send us more pictures to photos at brownbirdcare.com. Well, these are all the stories we have for you on this episode. Have a beautiful week. I'll see you next Tuesday.